Live from Kalalu Studios in New York City, you are listening to Let's Take It Offline with your host, Kishana Palmer. Hey, Fab Crew. You're listening to Let's Take This Offline, the podcast for everyday leaders. Part inspiration, part sit down. Let's have a conversation. Here's where you'll find the real deal about living well and leading well. I'm Kashana Palmer, your host and resident leadership whiz. And now let's take this offline. This episode is brought to you by Bloomerang, the donor database trusted by tens of thousands of fundraisers. For donor management, email marketing, online giving, and more, Bloomerang has you covered. Listeners of the Let's Take It Offline podcast get 10% off their first year of Bloomerang. Just visit bloomerang.com forward slash Kishana, K-I-S-H-S-H-A-N-A. So today on the show, I have Charmaine Jenkins, known as the Manifest Coach, and she is the founder of Reinvention Solutions Coaching and Training Company. Y'all, she has appeared on numerous TV shows, radio shows, and podcasts, including ABC's Here and Now, The Tom Joyner Morning Show, and Joy and Jackie Reed's podcast, Read This, Read That. As an experienced lecturer at CUNY York College in Jamaica, New York, she spent six and seven years respectively leading Black psychology and personal growth with the most diverse set of students in the most diverse borough in New York City. Charmaine credits much of her current success to her 30 years as a celebrity hairstylist and salon owner. And these experiences have cultivated her approach into how she sees people and their propensities. And she's going to be starting her doctoral studies. And I'm super excited to call her Dr. Jenkins. Charmaine released her first book, Before You Begin, a guided journal to supporting powerful goal setting last summer, and will be reopening her reinvention roadmap accelerator group coaching program in early 2021. Charmaine, I am so excited to have you here. So let's get into it. Charmaine, listen, Charmaine, you know, I couldn't have a podcast without having you here at some point. So I have to slide you in. So welcome, welcome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So Charmaine, you know, you and I talk about all the things all the time. And for those of y'all listening, Charmaine has um, unwittingly signed up to be my life coach forever. (laughs) She said she won't take my money. And so I just get to call her at seven o'clock in the morning at random times. And then she just snatches my edges off ever so softly before I've even had time to roll out of bed. Um, And Charmaine also serves as the coach in residence this year for the Rooted Collaborative, um, which I had to twist her arm to do. No, I didn't have to twist her arm. It was awesome. sure didn't. I didn't. No, I just asked her one time and she was good. But I wanted us to talk today, Charmaine, because we are suffering from what feels like an incurable disease. And I think the pandemic has revealed how many of us were suffering from this disease. And it's what I call martyritis. And y'all, martyritis is the kissing cousin, if you will, of being a workaholic. And it is really when you have to be so heavily involved in all the things you just can't help yourself. But you want everybody to know, too. Look at me while I work myself to the bone. No one knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. So, Charmaine, what do you think is making us really drive ourselves to the brink of busy? Like, why do we have to be so busy all the darn time? Um, I think it could be several things. Um, The first that comes to mind for me is Tony Robbins had a concept of six human needs. And he said, basically, everybody has six needs. Uh, Certainty, uncertainty, to feel love or connection, to feel special and significant, to be in contribution. And I can't think of the sixth one in this moment. But to that end, um, sometimes to feel special and significant, that's where busy could come in, right? And that martyrness. 
Because sometimes people's problems are the things that they use to make them feel special. So, wait a minute. Huh, the first 30 seconds in. Sometimes people's problems are the things that we use to make you feel special. Say more on that. Because that yeah, so, just hit me real you hard. Know, you're the you're the one who's always got to do everything for everybody. And some people, you know, that they get accolades from that or they, they get to manipulate people emotionally. You know, leave her alone. You know, she's... Busy, tired, overworked, has so many ch- problems, issues. She's this, she's that. She So that becomes your thing, right? You have to have something that distinguishes you. Everybody's looking for their thing. You know, for me, at some point, it was having all my earrings. It could be little things just like that. Having a bunch of earrings. Being the tall one, the fat one, the busy one, the successful one. The one who's got the issues, right? And so if you can... Build your life in a way that allows you to constantly complain about it. Then it gives you something that lets you stand out. How many of us are doing that right now? Right? Like, I guarantee you, every crew has one person in the crew that they always got some joint popping off. Something is wrong. Something is not quite right. They have thing upon thing that's piled up that they have to deal with on top of everything else going on. And so the attention um, is on them for whatever the reason is. Right. That's the thing. And the, and they become defined by that. And sometimes you call them that thing. You know, you know, so-and-so that lost their mother. You know, so-and-so that we can never get to go out because she's always got to work, you know. So, Ooh, right? you try, that hit me real. Ugh, I just got a bunch cut. I, that was me. Uh-huh. I was the person. And people were like, oh, I didn't invite you because you're uh-huh. always so busy. Right. And then you had to stop that because you yeah. realized that definition wasn't getting <laughs> that wasn't everything. getting me everything right. I needed. I was like, wait a minute. Right, it was working over here, but it wasn't working over there. So Absolutely. You, right. So when it doesn't work anymore, trust me, people will find another way to create significance for themselves. I think another uh, thing is a scarcity mindset. You know, I'm into the mindsets, and a lot of people when they have a scarcity mindset, they're always giving and doing. Because they want to feel people to feel like they are coming from a place of abundance. But it's really a place of lack and scarcity. They don't feel like they're enough. So they have to keep doing stuff to try and become enough to themselves and to everybody. And usually with that comes resentment, right? They do all the things and then you got to hear about it later, right? Uh, everybody always wants me to do this, that. You volunteered for it. Hello. You're the first one out there. I'll do it. I got it. And then afterwards, everybody always wants, I always got to pay for everything. I always got to do everything. I always have to be everything. When you were the one that signed up for it initially, right? And were upset when people didn't take you up on it. But that's trying to create the value that you don't feel like you have. When you feel like you're enough, you're not out there trying to do everything to prove that you're enough. Whoa. That's a whole heavy hitter right there. I, I know that there are folks who like, that are like, Oh, she's talking to me. And I think that most of us wouldn't initially think that like that comes from scarcity because particularly if you are a woman identifies as a woman that you were socialized to do the most, to do for others, to like put ourselves last, to like get everybody else together before we get ourselves together to deal with whatever's left over. And I think that that adds to the busyness. Yeah, well, you made a general statement there that I'm going to exclude myself from. (laughs) And she's like, not me. Yeah, you know, a lot of times we're not defining ourselves, right? And so we get to author our story. We're the only people who have the authority, right, to write our stories. But oftentimes we are allowing other people to determine who we're going to be and what we're going to do. Right. I don't think there's many people who made a decision that I'm just going to work myself to the bone, be imbalanced, be miserable and sacrifice myself. And a lot of times women turn themselves into sacrificial lambs. Shut up. And the public has almost like you said, conditioned a lot of people to think they have to do that. And people get mad at you sometime when you don't. Right. Yeah. And um, I was thinking when uh, around the topic, because. A lot of my span- spontaneity is carefully crafted. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. How can you carefully craft spontaneity? Because I know subjects, and then I start trying to think about the yeah. stuff, and then, you know, I write notes. But um, one time I was in a symposium around self-care, and I was thinking about when my parents died. My parents died two months apart. And I was in my last semester of college, and when college ended, I ran away to Europe for a month. But I did that having a one-and-a-half-year-old child and a husband. 
right? And so people were like, you can't leave and you can't. No, you can't. I'm out, right? I needed to do what I needed to do for me. And a lot of times people won't allow that, particularly for women. How are you going to leave your child? How are you going to leave your husband? How are you going to leave your, how are you going to leave it? How are you going to do, how are you going to do like this? Pew, right? Because I needed to do that for myself. And if I would allow other people to determine what was going to be healthy for me and what I needed, then I probably would have really gone into a deeper depression and have more of a breakdown than I did. And back then they didn't have cell phones. Right. So I was out. You were out. <laughs> you were actually off the map, off the grid. You had to go to some little call center and have the operator call your people and take that collect call. She's like, when Methuselah was in the room. Right. Listen, don't make it sound like that, man. Okay. That was only a few years ago. You Listen, make it sound like... that was 1989, when... 1990. When that was unheard of, right? Even today, it's unheard of. And particularly, like, you know, I think about a lot of my peers and girlfriends and clients and folks who are either thinking about having children um, later in life or have children of different ages and the ways in which we um, say the things that we can't do. So many conversations start with the things that we can't do because of the list of things that we are doing um, yeah. that feel like a choice. I mean, everything is a choice, but it doesn't always feel like you can say no. And so then you get into this cycle of saying yes to things that you don't feel like. You can say no to, but you're saying different. You're like, actually, no, you get to choose. No, you. that is our God-given right, right, to make choices. Um, he gave us free choice and free will. We've allowed other people to, to narrow those choices and determine them for us. And I'm saying that's not fair. You know, they don't do that to men a lot, right? They, they Men get a lot of freedoms that we're not told that we can have, right? And so people make decisions around what's possible for them and what's not possible for them. And I'm going to say it again, that authority, author is ensconced in authority, right? We yeah. we have the authority to author who we are and what we do. And it doesn't have to align with what other people have decided. Um, and we have to look at, you know, what's driving us. And then we get to not get caught up in people's the public or people's personal opinions when um in positive psych when they talk about 12 intentional activities for happiness one is to avoid social comparison right and a mm. lot of us do that and when you get caught up in that comparing yourself to others or comparing yourself to what other people told you you're supposed to do you are gonna not be happy let me tell you what i was in the dungeon of unhappiness and didn't even realize that I had walked myself down to the depths of the of the castle mm -hmm. by that comparison, like by looking at other business owners who appear to be more successful. They may actually be more successful. Who knows? Um, by comparing myself to other women who were winning accolades and winning awards and on this and on that. And I'm like, yo, I'm out here busting my buns. And this is not occurring in the same way. And I had a whole bunch of like, what about me moments um, that really made me feel like I'm like definitely, you know, just wrapping myself in the cloth of unhappiness because of that comparison and because of really like wondering like why I'm not as good as fill in the blank. And guess what? If you, if you got as good as them, then you're going to find somebody else you're not as good as. Hold right? on, wait a minute. Today. So it could continue on. I don't care how cute I think I am. There's somebody cute. I don't care how successful I might think I am. There's somebody more successful. I don't care how much I think I've got this relaxation balance thing figured out. I'm going to see somebody else over there. Dang, I went on vacation for a month. She takes off a quarter. You know, like we can Definitely. do that. <laughs> I just did that the other day. I was like, maybe this year I'll be able to take off two weeks at a time. And that's fine, but <laughs> when it's not good is when you say like so and so. Oh no, does. yes, like, and I had to slap myself on the hand because like, I went, I did like, like so. No, it wasn't you, ma'am. Okay, I done been on vacation with you. Okay? I'm saying, you know, I like a good month. Off. I know you like. I haven't done it yet, but you know, I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there one day. Okay, is it? Will it be today? I don't know. But yes, I did have a moment where I was like, like, and then I had to stop myself, like, like yourself, Kashana. Like this is a this is a thing you want to do for you. And I think that's really important. And so what that brings to mind to me then is why we end up getting caught up in being busy. So what do you think the difference between being busy and being productive really is? Yeah, I say I use fruitful. 
Mm. I I say most people are busy, but they're not fruitful. Fruitful. I like that better than productive. That's dope. Right. And, And the glorification of busy, you know, comes in where people try to tell you that I have a friend that says she doesn't pursue. She attracts what other people pursue. Ooh. And wait, she attracts what other what people, other people per- pursue. pursue. And you know, okay. and, and I'm a Christian. So from that place, I was telling a friend even today, like, you know, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things will be added unto you. Right. So really when you align yourself properly, yeah. you really don't have to chase stuff. And I know for me, when I'm running around trying to get things, it never seems to happen. But when I, you know, I get in a state of being who I need to be, things open up for me. It's really a be, do, have is is the way things are supposed to go. Right? Be, you have do, to be have. a certain person, then you will do certain things, and then you will have. And most people think it's do, have, be. Right? Oh. I got to do all this stuff, and then I'll have this, and then I'll be happy. No, you have to be happy. When you're coming from a place, a different place of being, then you will do things differently and then you will have things differently, right? Like even today, you hear me rustling, your audience gonna hear me rustling. I got on shiny, slippery clothes. She today. looks so good, y'all. Me. She's, I'm cute, but she's I'm noisy. Round the corner and coming over here cute. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, okay. This, this is my COVID clothes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but so yeah, so if you hear that scratch it, blame it on me. But um, yeah, so most people don't understand it's the being. It's the being that's really important. And when you're being a certain way, certain things will open up to you. I can use this for an example. You know, there's ways I've showed up with you that have made you want me to be part of things that you have going on. I didn't ask for them. I was just being, you know, whatever I was being in the moment that attracted the opportunity to share, you know, speak into your life differently, speak into your audience life. You've entrusted me with people in a way because of not necessarily because of what I was doing. Yeah. Right. And so um, I think that if people understood that the way they show up in the world and if they did it with intention, they would have a lot less to have to do. There would be less busyness. And again, people are trying to prove themselves, right? They're trying to prove their their worth and their value um, to the world and to themselves by all that doing. And it becomes hard to not do. I I had a, um, I was thinking I was a hairstylist for 30 years and and I'm a New Yorker. And New York, that like hustle thing is real. It's real. Yeah, the devil is a liar. You know, we always like, you know. Um, can't knock the hustle, you know. Yeah, and I look, I would look at people who don't hustle. Like, what's wrong Rising. with you? Like, why are you not moving? Like, what, what is the situation? Why you're not making moves? Like, the making moves mentality, I think, is really ingrained in many New Yorkers. Uh-huh. And, and the struggle, and the, the struggle, struggle is real, you know. And, and everybody's on this little struggle buses. But when you look at the most successful people, they're not doing a whole lot. Like, they are creative in their thinking and their being like they have learned how to delegate and they're not abdicating responsibilities. They're delegating them, right? There's a distinction there. We try to abdicate. We try to manage a lot of times by abdication. I don't want to do this. So I'm yes. going to have somebody else Ooh, do it. Ooh, the mistakes I've made in right. business and in life being like, well, I hired fill in the blank person to do X. And so now I don't got to deal with it anymore. And I took my hands off the steering wheel and then realize we done veered into a tree. And they might not even, yeah, they might not even have the skill. You just sick of doing it. Sick, so, exactly. Here, you do it. You take it. Exactly. We do that. We do that with our kids sometimes when they babies. Here, take them. Right? <laughs> it's not because they're best suited. It's because we don't want to be bothered. Right? And so um, when people get to a certain level of success, they carefully craft a team to ensure that they don't have to do much but oversee. So normally the people who are doing are never going to really get anywhere because a, they don't understand that um, teamwork makes the dream work. They're control freaks. Um, They have scarcity mindsets. They have fixed mindsets where they believe that, you know, they're that most people can't do certain things and they can't. That's why I got to do it myself. That's why I got to do it it myself. Mm -hmm. And as soon as somebody messes up because they don't give themselves or anybody else permission to be human, 
so nobody has room for failure, then that's just proof to them that they have to do it themselves. And then they lay in bed exhausted at night, and somehow that's supposed to be proof that um, they, they've they been productive. And I find that most people that are like moving like that are really productive. I know for myself, I write a thousand things down every day, and you running around trying to create all of that stuff. Generally, it's, it's a half-assed job, right? Because yeah. you, you're really more intent on getting things done and having them done well. Or you don't even get to savor and enjoy what you're doing or Absolutely. celebrate it because you feel like you got to be on to the next thing. Exactly. I mean, I think that that is so true in so many areas of our lives. And when we talk to women, that's the thing I hear all the time. And that's the thing I have to check myself on all the time. Like, what am I enjoying? You know, like even just recording the podcast, like the intention, people are like, they've been asking me to do a podcast, you know, this for like two years or three years and why I had all these fits and starts. Cause I started a bunch of projects and stopped a bunch of projects is because I was trying to rush to get to the end. I was trying to rush to get through the 97 pieces as opposed to really enjoy the process and really enjoy that it took, maybe took an extra time. And so even in bringing to this project to fruition, it was like, all right, here's a general idea how I want to get it done. Let's t- be intentional about how we map it. And then really enjoying how the artwork got created, how we changed the name a couple of times, who we thought we would be on it, me making decisions not to be like to chase this or that, quote unquote, air quotes, big name or that name. I was like, no, I'm going to talk to my friends who do big things in the world and also are really dope and actually drop gems every day. Um, and being able to enjoy each aspect of the process is a very different experience for me because I definitely don't enjoy much. Yep. And people look at the house, they look at the whip I drive, they look at what appears to be this great life on social media. They don't know the sacrifices I made to raise the kid I raised um, or that I don't do everything right. And I think that your point about just like being able to stop and enjoy the things that we actually have put on our list to do may may give us a clue to like some things need to come off. Well, you might give people a clue if you start letting them know the things that you are going through and having to endure. So now we're going to take a quick break. So use this moment to stand up, plant your feet firmly on the ground, reach for the sky and stretch. Get that oxygen into your lungs, friend. We'll be right back. Love what you heard? Found a little nugget, but need more? Head on over to kishcamp.com, my masterclass for managers who are ready to do things differently at work and grow their skills so they can lead with confidence. Don't forget to subscribe, download, and leave a comment so we can keep the conversation going. Now, let's head back to take this offline. Be of service to people and be human. You know, this superwoman narrative doesn't really serve people. Um, Balance is the key to life, right? And so that's not just balance in terms of rest and work and fun and, you know, what all the other stuff. Like, it, it, it has to balance out. And I think people do a disservice to folk when they don't let them know that it ain't easy. Mm-hmm. Right. And and then what I hate, the flip side of that is, is when you go on social media and tell people it's not easy, then Negroes act like they got to call the crisis alert system. <laughs> you know? Not the crisis oh, alert man, system. They'd be killing me. I'd be like, today was a bad day. Hold your head up. God's got you. Don't be like that. Smile, sister. I'm here if you need me. Good Lord, y'all. Like, yo, that's what it looks like. Like, I can't stand it. When they be posting, then you got to do a then post. Then you got to do a post. Like, I'm really I'm okay. I'm really okay. I'm not on the edge. I'm just look like a normal ninja <laughs> who doesn't always have it together, get it right, or feel good about themselves. It's like people OD. And, they, and, and I'm telling you, like, when I say I give myself permission to be human, I had to do it because a lot of people don't. Yeah. Like, people have put me on pedestals, and it... And it really caused me to really like shrink back from society and people. I spent a lot of time by myself because I got tired of folks telling me who I was. Um, And then sometimes you get caught up in that. Like I've been caught up in it, who I was as a Christian, who I was as a business owner, who I was as a coach, who I was as a this, who I was as a that. And I have a lot of people who don't give me space to just be human. 
right? And literally, like, I put on a low-cut shirt. Why do you got your titties out? Because <laughs> your titties is snackalicious. Because I want them out. You, got, right. you have yours out, and they literally say, but you're not like me. Uh... You're not supposed to be like me. Right? I've had that happen to me in a lot of instances. Well, why are you getting on my case about doing something you do? Because you're supposed to be better than me. Because you're supposed to... Know. And, like, that was a pain in the behind. And I think I made some decisions just to get knocked off the pedestal so Negroes could know I'm just like them. I'm normal. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times I chronicle my life and let people know what's going on with me and even how things that happened so long ago are still impacting me. And a lot of times people don't want to hear that. They don't even want to hear you quitting. I've had people tell me, you can't stop because yes. I'm, I'm watching you. And if you give up, then who am I going to have to look at? For an example, you better go to look in the mirror because yeah. I'm not going to sit here and set myself on fire to keep you warm. Come on. That's not my job. That's not my version of toasty. And that's what women do all a lot of times. They feel like they really have to set themselves on fire for us so that other people can be comfortable. And guess what happens when you turn into a crisp of ashes on the floor? They sweep them up into a dustpan and put them in the garbage and they and go, keep find, moving. go find, find something somebody else, else to ignite. That's it. And so, you know, what came to mind when you were talking about that? First of all, if y'all ain't taking notes right now, just back this whole thing up, okay? Like, mm-hmm. come on, girl, you look good. Won't you back it? Back this thing up and get some notes because that is such a word, particularly, I think, for those of us who are have been tagged as overachievers, rock stars, bright lights. Um, who have been tagged as high performing, you know, all of the sort of like success metrics um, that we aspire to have been tagged as don't want to fall from grace, air quotes uh, of having or being. And I think that that's what ends up having us move into that martyritis. So when I talk about martyritis, I would, when I give keynotes and sessions, I, there are five things that I think about. And so I want to share them with you and kind of get your opinion. So one is that you pressure yourself to be constantly available. Mm. So where do you see us doing that the most? Where we're just like, oh, you want me to do what? Let me twist myself into a pretzel. Oh, you want me to do who? And so that's one of the things that for me, you know that you're teeter-tottering into that zone where you are putting internal pressure on yourself to show up for every single thing. So I think life generally is supposed to feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a... um talk with God this morning about where my life feels good and where it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned, and I shared this in your last um, rooted coaching session session about understanding what you can have control of and what the universe and God has to do, right? So there's some things I can do, but there's things I can't do. And I have to be willing to let those go and acquiesce. But I have my talks with God about, okay, like, this is what I want, and I realize I can't, like, take care of this part. So can you please, like, figure this out for me in a Mm -hmm. timely fashion? (laughs) Let these prayers be specific and time-bound. Thank you. Yeah, less than specificity breeds cooperation. I believe that with the universe, too. And, um, but you have to be honest with yourself about where your life works and doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And in any coaching relationship I have and even in my small group coaching courses and even when I start put out this self-guided course the first thing I do and even in my book is have people look at a wheel of life and look at the different compartments of their life and see how they rate them absolutely and then you get to figure out what's working and what's not working in both areas because even when things suck sometimes there's something that works there right and then you get to make boundaries people are going to you know, Michael Jackson, he said, I'm a vegetable. You're just a buffet. They eat all for you. You're a vegetable. <laughs> right? Like, people will, like, eat you up if you let them. And you have to stop people. You have to set boundaries. And you'll be unwilling to set boundaries when you don't feel like you're enough or that you can go the do whatever you need to do without these certain relationships. When my mom first died, I let people abuse me. Because, and they're my best of friends, supposedly. And they were, I guess, at some point. But after she died, I was so scared of losing anybody else that whatever you threw at me, I took it because I didn't want to lose anybody else. That's, yeah. 
And, and you invited the abuse in. Right. Well, they can smell it. Yes, right? I do think that. I think when you're in that space, people can smell it. And you just, just right off you. It's like a pheromone that you're just giving off into the world and it's coming at you. Right. So the, and it shows up in shows actions, up. right? Yep. They do a little something, you take it. They do a little something else, you take it. Yep. And then um, at some point, like you have to look up and decide what's more important to you, right? Is it important to have people around or have people around who value and love you and support you and care for you? And not to say they won't ever hurt your feelings or overstep a boundary, but it will be done in a different way. And yeah. then you, because of your relationship, will be able to be like, hey, 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 you know, that doesn't really work for me. Um, and so something else has to be created here. And then they, because they respect the relationship, will find some way to have a relationship that's uh, reciprocal in nature, you know, around in terms of uh, uh, respect and value and making sure everybody is okay and cool, you know, even if it looks like an argument, you know? Yeah. So, um, I I, love that. Yeah. I love that. So the second thing that I think about and I tell folks, you know, you're suffering from martyritis if you are stressed out all the time, but your efforts don't ever seem to pay off. Right. Just spinning in circles. That's it. A little hamster. Little hamster. Just on the wheel. Just a busy and a busy and a busy and a busy. busy. Going and a going and a going and a going. Right. And 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 you'll never be ex- happy either, right? Because listen, I have three things. People concern themselves with their aesthetic, having control of things so that they can feel empowered, and their identity. Right. Well, keep it keeps us up and in, in front and front and for the fronting for people and stuff. And then generally when you're concerned with that and you're trying to stay busy, you end up looking crazy, mm-hmm. having no control and then tarnishing your identity. Whew. Right. And so folks who are doing that thing there, cause they're trying to look a certain way and show up a certain way in the end, it never works out that way. Yeah, it never right. works out that way. Yeah, and you left holding the bag, left holding the bag. So the third thing that I think about when I think if you're teeter totter into martyritis, you're doing this thing. You don't trust your coworkers, your team, your employees. If you're in a social group, your committee members, you don't trust folk to do the job. You can't trust them to, because then you won't be needed. <sighs> Say more on that. If you, yeah, I mean, if you could do the things that you needed to do, then I can't swoop in and save the day. And then I won't be able to find the value I need to have by being exhausted from helping you all. Y'all need me. You need me. Right. So I can't, I cannot let you be successful. And we learned that growing up. If you're growing up in the church, we learned that growing up in some of our family environments, you know, everybody has the mom or the grandma, the auntie that rolls in with the potato salad done properly or the mac and cheese done. They're like, well, I know you just needed me to come in here and do this right. Even though they just work two and a half shifts, they're exhausted on their feet and they're angry about it. Throw the plate on the, throw the platter on the table. Um, We learned that really early that not trusting folks and be, and then needing to swoop in is a part of being the strong one is a part of being, you know, the one who gets it done. It's a part of being the sucker. Oh, to that part. To that, to that, to that part. Some people are like, don't worry about it. We'll get Kashana to do it. Yikes. Right. And Kashana think they need me. I had, um, when you asked me to do this and I was looking at the topic, I was talking to somebody I used to work with who has this really, really bad, like she's one of the loveliest people ever, but she tries to do too much. And when I worked with her, I worked with her for three years. And it was so funny because I was saying a lot of people are working from home, but they don't really work. And she's like, well, what's that job? Because I need that job. I said, if you wasn't doing everybody else's job, you wouldn't be working that hard either. And she had to laugh. And she was running HR at this studio and let it be a birthday. I'm telling you, a 10 foot conference table full of food. I know my birthday, I had oxtails. We're talking the food pans like a caterer. Oxtail, stewed that chicken. That she ordered? No, that she cooked. Oxtail, oh, stewed chicken, uh, rice and peas, macaroni and cheese, uh, fish, every damn thing. Like both sides, at least 12 different dishes that she cooked before she came in and then she bought all the sternals and then she want to carry it all up her stairs herself and then she want to, and then later, ooh, I'm so tired. Well, first of all, you could have made me a plate 
<laughs> they didn't need to be the whole studio but she she said i get so much joy out of it but i used to tell her, i know part of this is so you can be that chick right oh so and so she she always does the spread what would we do without her she's, so sweet, she's so sweet and she so this and she so that and then she's exhausted and this is how she is in her household too husband spoiled daughter spoiled Never have to do anything. Everybody, she's she's um, comes from another country. Anybody who comes to this country, you know whose house they're going to stay at. Her house, right? And she got to have five bedrooms for the just in three, case for the three of them, you know. And it goes on and on and on. And then she, you know, that and now you're tired. You didn't have to do all this stuff, but I like it. Yeah, and it serves a purpose. Yes, I think that serves a purpose. Part is the key thing. And I think that it leads into the last thing that I think about when I think about writer writers, which is you think asking for help makes you weak and incapable. Right. But I don't even know if they think that. I think they need to believe that so they can keep up the facade. Right. Because no man is an island and nothing great is built on its own. And independence is an illusion. Right. You can't even be born alone. There's really nothing that you can accomplish by yourself. Even when you're doing stuff by yourself, you're generally using some tool or something that somebody else made. You didn't make the pen and the table and the paper and all of that. We really can't do anything on our own. And so people who walk around here with that, the independence is an illusion is generally because they're distrustful because they didn't allow anybody. They're judgmental. And they've now looked at people and deemed them inadequate because they didn't allow them to be human. And so when they messed up or didn't do things when they wanted to, then that became their testament that they can't trust anybody. And therefore, I am a better human being than you because I managed to still get all this stuff done. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, there's no balance in your life and you've not taken any care of yourself and you probably either look crazy or you're acting crazy or you're feeling crazy. You're feeling crazy. Yeah, I was right. Asking. Even if you don't want to admit it. And then you go to bed at night and it's not cute, right? You, you either fall into the bed and you can't sleep because your head is racing and you have no balance and happiness. And I was thinking about most of the people we deem super women that are truly super women. They, they have figured out a way to make time for themselves. You know, I was thinking about Michelle Obama Remember how she would get up and go to those spin classes? Oh my gosh. And all of that. She went to the spin class and still found time for her kids. And her and her husband would go on dates. They, they'd fly. And we were like, York. she is the epitome of what we want in womanhood. But I don't know how we actually made moves to actually make that a right. reality for themselves. They won't do it. A lot of people don't really want certain things, they just want to want it. They want them. to want it. Right. What do you think that's about, though? Like, you just want to be able to say, like, I, I want to do those things. It'd be nice if, oh, if I only had that life. Right. Oh, if I only had that kind of time. Oh, I wish I had that kind of fill in the blank. I feel like I've said that a lot and I've like started to really walk myself away from saying that kind of stuff. Like what actually is stopping me from filling the blank thing? Because the work that's required, a lot of people don't want to do it. Like it, it's a commitment and work to relax. Yes. It's a commitment at work. Like I, I, I'm into house music and there was a time I was like, I am going out once a month. And even that requires something, right? You got to yeah. get it together, get your schedule, get some sleep, be willing to lose some sleep. Yeah. You know, maybe me with the bad knees, you got to be willing to go through <laughs> you ain't got the Megan knees. pain next, next day, <laughs> you know, whatever. And so you got to, you might have to, Explain to your husband why you're not going to spend time. Find a sitter for your kid. Yeah. You know, and then you have to really, really believe you deserve that time. You might have to tell some people, look, you know, bug off. I used to say, kill yourself. My daughter says, we can't say that anymore. It's not nice. No. Don't say that. No, not anymore. But, you know, but that's what you're saying in your head when they're like getting in your behind <laughs> like, about you back away. trying to do something for yourself. Absolutely. You know, when I had my salon, I used to take off early every Saturday and that were, people were so angry at me for doing that because it didn't work for them. And a lot of times people don't want you to do what you need to do for you because it doesn't work work for for them. them. Right. And so you have to be mindful of that too. Yeah. So what is the recovery process? What do you think how do you think we walk ourselves away from martyritis, from 
finding our value and being exhausted from finding our value in flogging our guts out? Like what, what, what is the it? What's the step forward? I think two things are to like really examine what's driving you. Right. Yeah. Um, and like I said, it, it, it could be one of those six needs uh, to feel special and significant because you can get addicted to doing certain things if they fill those human Absolutely. needs for you. But I also think you need to look at what's driving you. And there's like a continuum of what drives you. The lowest of it being survival. Absolutely. Right. Survival. Are you looking for security? Is it to feed your self-esteem? Um, and then you start moving up to the higher parts, but even those can become traps, right? Yes. Is it because of love? Um, is it, and then, you know, it's better when it's because it's for self-expression. What are you doing these things to be fully expressed? Right. Are you doing them to try to make people love you Mm -hmm. or to, or to define you and give you self-esteem? Right. Or is it for your intellectual or spiritual fulfillment? The highest is when it's spiritual fulfillment. Yeah. Right. And also, I think that people need to look at the fictional self versus their authentic self. Uh, we spend so much time in the caricature of ourself, right? Like performing out in the world for what we think we're supposed to do. Right. And so then it shows up as what we end up doing and we get who we are and who we think we're supposed to be really confused. Right. It's a distorted self-image and it's based on public opinion usually. Yeah. Right? And it's... Or it's a based on external influences. You know, some people are still trying to live up to what somebody told them t- they were, should be, or can't be. Yeah. All right? Or internalized incidences. I know my mother's death. My mother's been dead 30 years. It still drives me sometime in who I'm showing up as and who I decide to be, even though sometimes it doesn't even work for me. And, and after... There were many years where everything I did was with the notion of hearing somebody say, your mother would be so proud of you. Yeah. And then when I finished doing everything that I knew my mother wanted me to do or would have been proud of me doing, I didn't even know what to do anymore. You're like, well, what's next? I didn't know. What do I I do? I I really spent years like kind of in limbo because I didn't know what to do because I wasn't being my authentic self. I was being... Christine's daughter and doing what I thought she would want. Like she was really ruling me from the grave. So a lot of people have internalized um, uh, circumstances and definitions that are driving them. And when you're authentic self, you're really, that's when your true and unique expression comes out. Right. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm grown, but I don't fancy myself and I don't think I show up that way. And it bothers some people. And for a while I was trying to show up differently for folks. Right. You know, I natural, y'all natural now, goody goody gumdrops. I've been natural <laughs> damn near all my life. And I and I used to have people when I would I was dating somebody of affluence once and my surrogate mom would be like, What you gonna do with that hair? Because I used to oh wear my a gosh. big afro Even when puff. I cut my hair and I remember having like natural my hair has been natural for ten almost ten years now, but I wore weave for forever. But when I stopped doing that and then I cut all my hair off, I remember having a conversation with one of my good friends and she was like you think you're going to get married with your hair cut like that? Like, I mean, you Listen, think men are going to be attracted to that? Like, what? I, it, th- I cut my hair in a Caesar in 1992. And people thought I had cancer or had become a lesbian or both. They couldn't understand. They were like, what happened? Why'd you have to cut your hair? And I thought I was going to lock my hair. And I was like, no, I wanted to. Like, they couldn't phantom it, Right. And I remember leaving and I was like, nobody's ever going to want to date me again. (laughs) And I went outside and this man was like, I have to tell you, like, you are the most beautiful woman. It's like God sent them there to let me know I'd be okay. But the guy I was seeing wouldn't say anything to me for a while. He used to love to touch my hair. He didn't say anything. One of his friends said something. He snapped him one good look. But I wore it for seven years. And, you know, I think it became fashionable after that. But then people like sometimes people look at shorty and they see confidence. But the thing was, if I would have gave in to what everybody else wanted, I would have had me a good little bob and kept it pushing. You know, Mm -hmm. I kept trying to dress a certain way to be a Christian. And I was trying to dress a certain way and be a certain way for my friends. All in J. Crew 
when that's not yes, who that's I not am. Who you are. Yeah, yeah, I always say I'm a dirty backpack girl in a designer world. <laughs> yes, right? come on, dirty backpack girl in a <laughs> yeah. designer world. And I'm now, a designer girl in a designer world. With yeah, backpack tendencies. With a little backpack tendency. Okay, as long as we understand yeah. the difference. All right, as long as anybody listening. Okay, okay. That voice changed. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you see how I did that? Yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm, so speaking of backpacks, I mean, like there's this thing around get in the bag. So I want, as we're thinking about this, because we're wrapping up, I want you to just kind of talk through, like, busy ain't the bag. Like, on our quest to, you know, be successful, whether you're a business owner, whether you're a freelancer, a side hustler, a corporate person, a nonprofit, all listeners are, they span the map. Busy ain't the bag. Like, let me tell you, when I first opened my salon, I have a mentor. Her name is Vera Moore. She has a large cosmetic company. She was the first black um, store owner in Green Acres Mall. Mm-hmm. I met her when I was 19 years old. And she has international stuff. And when I opened my salon, she said, you're never going to make any money behind this chair. And I was like, you sound crazy. How did this lady get to be successful talking this foolishness? Like, I'm the money market in this salon. Mm-hmm. And she was like, that's not how this is going to work. Like, you need to be out in the community, um, meeting people, developing relationships. Relationships precede resources. Right? Woo! And most people don't get that part. Relationships precede resources. resources all the time. And, and, and every new season of your life is ushered in by a relationship, right? The good and the negative parts of it. And like she said, I should have been building relationships, building community, um, uh, uh, um, letting the community know more about us, making them more awareness, building community awareness, um, learning more about managerial skills because you can't work in your business and on it at the same time. It just doesn't happen. doesn't happen. I was so busy in my salon. When I was closing, people were telling me how they was in the wax room giving head and doing this and doing that. I didn't see any of that because my head was in hair. And then I started working less days a week so I could work on the business. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you, the most money I've ever made anywhere, I did the least amount of work, right? And now... Even this year, I've been able to command more money for the same units of time, right? And that's a being thing, too. That's a being right? thing. Right? That's a mindset. That's a being thing. You know, I teach mindsets. Where the mind I goes, do. the behind right. follows. That's it. That's my thing. I wrote down something else I had around that. I can't find it. It's got the time. But <laughs> it's, it, it <laughs> still comes up to the same thing, right? So when I shifted how I showed up, who I was being, then that shifted how I was doing things. And sometimes now I get resentful if I feel like I'm working hard and I, I got to get back to the balance because I like to lay around now, Yeah. right? And I'm okay. But I'm telling you, even in doing hair, I I increased my income 400% and did the least amount that I had done because my mindsets were different. So my demands were different. When I went into a certain space, I told them they have to do this and this is what I'm doing. And just just getting the command, the, the getting the command of your mind. I think this is so important to be able to 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 really focus in on that. That a lot of times we let go of the command of our own minds. We we oftentimes do. We're 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 trying to drive things, but when you make choices, you become servant to the choices that you make, right? right? And so if you if you want to grow, you have to make the choices to stop playing victim to stop working as hard, to stop devaluing themselves, particularly women. We put ourselves on sale a lot. Whoa, wait a minute. On sale. Yeah, we stay in the Macy's 40% off rack. And and, and, after Christmas sales, real. Right, for real. Like this- End of year clearance sale? This this end of the year clearance sale, right? So you have to decide what you're going to believe about what's available to you. And then we get so that 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 scarcity mindset sometimes makes us feel like we got to do and take every little something that somebody gives us. You want to do this? Okay. Okay. Like if we don't do it, A, they'll never come back to us again and ask us. Yes. B, if we don't take what they give us, then they're not going to give us anything Ooh, else. I've taken a job or two 
when I was in full-time career work and a client or two or three or four or five or six, seven, um, in my first few years of, um, running Kashana and co just off that idea, like, Oh, if they don't say, if I don't say yes, they're going to ask somebody else and they're never going to come back. And they're going to then tell people that I, that I asked for this or I, that, I had this as a requirement. And, and that's all scarcity, all scarcity, all scarcity, because they might not come back. Listen, when I did hair, people would come. You know, the, they, it became a big thing when the Dominicans came out and they were doing these $5, oh, the five dollar washes $5 and the five dollar $20 like, blowouts gonna, in New what York. What you gonna do, Charmaine? What you gonna do? You gonna lower your prices? No. And my thing was always there are Kias, there are Hyundais, there are Hondas, there are Benzes, there are Bentleys, right? They're all cars. That's it. And I don't see Bentley when the when the Kia came out like oh, oh shoot, shoot. <laughs> there's, there's this Kia out there maybe we have to lower our prices no you become who you need to be and then you find the people who appreciate you and are willing to pay what you want to pay there's the the more things appreciate and are appreciated there's generally a smaller amount of people who are willing and or able yes. to be able to acquire that thing. Yep. And they also value it more. Yeah. Right? Absolutely right. Yeah. So you have to make a decision what you want to do. Do you want to be the one? And, and trust me, even with my price point, I felt like I was working too hard. And I had clients that would say, you need to raise your prices, Charmaine. Like, you know, it's not good when your people are telling you, you not don't understand all. your value. Not at all. Right. And so... I had to, you know, I I used to get mad at clients who had that one rib syndrome, but then I had to look at me sometime and see if I had the one rib syndrome. You know, I had to do that. I had to do that for that. No. And so once I set my barriers and barriers and made my price points and decided what it was going to look like for me, I worked less hours. I took less clients. My money didn't suffer. And then ultimately... I positioned myself in a place where I was like, I'm not even going to do this anymore. I'm just going to work over here and create that. I love that. I love that. And I think that's so much that um, we really need to sit on and think about. And so I want to make, make sure that folks know how to connect with you. What are you working on? How do folks connect with you and kind of figure out, you know, what's next for you? Talk to us about that as we wrap up. All right, and and I found a good note that I had, so yes, I'm going to say that say it. people really get. You have to stand up and walk out of your history, right? Yeah, and and that's and that's when the busyness will leave too, because until you do that, it's not your history; it's your life. Absolutely, right? So stop living Absolutely. to your labels. We have to stop living to your labels. Your labels not who you are unless you determine that it is. Absolutely, right? and so um, for me. What I do, I have a, I always forget. I wrote a book this summer. <laughs> How you forget you wrote a book? Oh my gosh. You know, I wrote a guided journal and it's really the 10 steps of what you need to do before you even set your goals. Right. Um, and it's called before you begin. It's on gum road. It's so good. And you know, I, because people make goals from disempowered places yeah. and from their history and pathologies oftentimes. So my thing is we have to do all the work. So that you make sure you make your goals from an empowered place. It's totally different goals that are made from those places. When you understand yourself, what's driving you, who's been driving you, what stories and narratives you've allowed to uh, uh, define you, what's your story, what you've authored, and then to change that and to make goals from those places. Yeah. So that's one thing. I think I'm going to start like uh, sharing some pieces from it. On my own personal um, Instagram, which is, which is? manifest <laughs> underscore coach. And um, I have a, a, a program, Reinvention Roadmap Accelerator, that I did as a small group coaching. But later on, hopefully this Q1, I'm going to launch it as a self-guided um, program. Yeah. So it'll we be. We need it. Yeah. And people can do this work on their own. And then, you know, I'll create a group where I'll come into and help propel people and move them forward. You know, I think I'm an interrupter. I'm here to interrupt the patterns. I love um, it. And those are the ways I'm choosing to do it now. I don't really do one-on-one -on -one coaching clients that much anymore. A few here and there. But, you know, the group thing and the self-guided is where it's really going to be. Really the self-guided. I love gonna the self-guided. Getting yeah. folks to get, get in with themselves. And to be committed to doing the work themselves. Because a yeah. lot of times they want to, they think the coach is Don't supposed the to work be for them. like we're a magician. 
And, you know, that presto changeo. And no, you got to get in. Macy Gray said, you better get up, get out, and get something. Get something. Right. So. Absolutely. That puts the responsibility back on them. I love it. Charmaine, oh my gosh, it was so good to have you hanging out with me today in the studio. Any excuse to be in your face. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I love it. (laughs) Thank you so much, y'all. Please make sure you check in the show notes how to follow Charmaine. Manifest underscore coach on Instagram. If you are not a part of the Rooted Collaborative, you better get to the rootedcollaborative.com and become a member today as Charmaine is one of our coaches in residence for 2021. Charmaine, we have got to have you back on the podcast. You just dropped like a ridiculous number of gems. I know folks are going to be rewinding and rewinding to get to it. And so I just want to thank you so much for hanging out with me, for always saying yes when I ask. And we got to have you back. As a regular um, on I'll, Let's Take This Offline. I'll wear clothes that don't wear it. No, <laughs> no, here it is. That's extra special. Look, that's, the, that's the applause. Yes, button. that's applause. I love it. <laughs> Charmaine, thank you so much. Thank you for, so much. Yes, I love you to death. All right, y'all. On our next episode, we'll be talking about one of my faves, Break every chain, breaking generational curses. And y'all, you don't want to miss that one. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll be talking to you real soon. I'll try one more time. Love what you heard? Found a little nugget, but need more? Head on over to Kish Camp. My mess. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> Head on to Kish Camp. Kish Camp. Oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> yeah. Here I am. <laughs> Love what you heard? Found a little nugget. <laughs> a little, a little nugget. A little nugget. <laughs>